Hey guys, Alex Khan here. And last night I was looking at Netflix, looking for, you know, like a, a car movie to watch, you know, one that I hadn't seen yet. So I was surfing through Netflix, you know, you know, trying different uh, keywords for the search. And eventually I got to this movie called Lost Bullet. You know, I, I looked at the preview footage and they showed a lot of car action in the uh, in the in the preview. So I went ahead and hit play and I watched it straight through. I think this movie was only 80 minutes, maybe 90. It was, it was pretty short by by today's movie standards. So I, I, I finished that really quick. Um, so let me just give you a quick plot summary and then I'll give you my thoughts on the movie. I'll, I'll mention some of the cars that they were used, including the hero car. So. The basic plot of this movie, uh, there's this uh, criminal, he's trying to help his brother out by robbing some uh, jewelry store. And so to do so, he uses this really uh, crappy uh, Clio car. I mean, I, I think it's crappy. That That's what the characters allude to anyways in the, in the movie. But uh, he reinforces the car so that it can uh, you know, bust through the building straight through to the other side. So... Suffice it to say, his car does make it through, uh, but then his car doesn't doesn't move, so he gets caught by the police, and then he starts spending time behind uh, behind bars in jail. So fast forward a little bit, this uh, this police guy, go, he's like, hey, you know, we could really use your mechanical expertise for making our cars a little stronger, you know, because he has like some of the best drivers apparently. Um, I didn't really get that aspect in the movie when I watched it, but anyways, uh. This guy works on their cars, so he's still a prisoner, but at least by working on cars, he gets to do what he likes, and he gets to see, you know, the the outside of prison. Um, but at some point, uh, there is some, some double-crossing going on, and the prisoner, who everyone suspects is a bad guy anyways, you know, they start to target him, you know, the police is after him. And then it's up to this criminal to uh, clear his name. So that's the basic uh, plot, you know, summary in a nutshell. So I want to give you my thoughts on this movie. The, the story was was pretty engaging, I thought, you, you know, for, you, you know, as an excuse to uh, show some cars. Uh, that said, I wouldn't call this a car movie, but there is, a, you know, quite a bit of a car action, um, especially the last 20 minutes of this movie. I think... Uh, yeah, the last 20 minutes of this movie is, is a pretty good uh, car scene. I like the way they filmed it. Um, but let's uh, let's talk more about the movie first. So, this is a, I think it's a French movie. And here's a problem. I could not f find an option to watch this movie in its uh, native language. And I have a hard time watching foreign films when it's dubbed in English. Because what, almost always, whenever they dub a movie in English the acting gets destroyed by the dubbing. So the dubbing wasn't great in this movie. And a lot of times I felt like the voices didn't match the, uh, the actor's physiques. So it was kind of off putting, but after a few minutes, well, after like, I don't know. I actually, I, I never got used to it. I, I, I hated the dubbing. The dubbing sucked, but uh, I, I did like, um, you know, the setting of France because, or I think it was France, but I like that setting because usually when I watch, you know, movies, it's usually set in the United States, which, you know, I, I like that too. Uh, but it was cool to see, you know, European cars because a, a lot of the uh, cars in this movie were, well, all the cars in this movie were European. A lot of them were Renaults and Mercedes. Well, I won't say I didn't like the acting. I felt like it was a different style because none of the actors in this movie were charismatic. Like even the main hero, you know, he felt kind of like a putz. <laughs> Like, he was kind of a doofus, and I felt like he wasn't cool. Like, you know, in a lot of American movies, the hero is usually a cool person, or he's funny. This guy, he wasn't very likable. Um, like, he wasn't likable in, in any sense of the word. Like, you know, he wasn't slick or anything. Um, so there was that. Uh, something else that's really interesting about this movie, whenever they had, like, like um, you know, physical, uh, you know, fist fights, there was no outrageous over-the-top sound effects added. So if I got punched, there wasn't really a sound effect for it. It just had someone getting punched, and then they would react to it, which I, I think is kind of cool because it makes it a bit more realistic. Because if you have ever seen a fight in real life, you would know that there isn't that whoosh sound. It's just a... There's, like, really no sound when people are actually fighting in real life. 
Um, uh, now the car scenes, uh, I think the car scenes, even though there's only a few of them, I, I think they were pretty good actually. Uh, what I liked about the car scenes, especially the last 20 minutes for the climax, it wasn't over edited. And whenever a, a, a major stunt was involved, they didn't over edit the, the heck out of those scenes because in Hollywood, there appears to be a rule that whenever you show a stunt, you have to film it from like 40 million different angles. I hate that. But with this movie, I guess they have a different philosophy. So they didn't, you know, shoot it from every angle and splice it all into like a few seconds. Um, when I saw a stunt, I could see what was actually happening. And there were some really good, you know, practical car stunts. I don't think they were CGI. They looked pretty realistic. If it was CGI, they did a pretty darn good job. So uh, practical car stunts is the way to go because whenever you watch CGI, something, I mean, usually, especially for a car scene, your eyes will tell you that something's off with this scene. So I really appreciate that they used uh, practical uh, car stunts in this movie. So I, I did like the car stunts. I wouldn't really call this a car movie, but there were quite a bit of, uh, there was quite a few, uh, you know, car scenes in it. And especially the last 20 minutes was, was a pretty uh, decent uh, car scene. So let me talk about some of the cars. I actually wrote them down because I'm not too familiar with these cars. So the opening uh, car that you see is a 2000 Renault Clio 2. And uh, the character actually does uh, draw attention to the name of the car, a Clio. And another character also draws attention to the name Clio. And I love that in the movies. I like it when the characters talk about the cars specifically because it makes me feel like it's a car movie. Um, that was the first car. That's the one that ran through the building. And then uh, our main hero got caught by the police. Um, I guess the second real car that we, we kind of see is a 2000 Ford Fiesta, which wasn't really used very aggressively. It was just used to drive the brothers away in the car. Uh, but I would call this, th the next car I'm going to mention, the hero car. Uh, this, this is a red car, and this was a, uh, I think it's a, oh, here it is. I wrote it down somewhere. It's a 1988 Renault 21 Turbo. And that was a pretty uh, pretty distinctive car. It was red. And this car was the driving force of this movie. And it's the reason why this uh, this movie has the the name Lost Bullet. And I'll let you figure that one out later on. I don't want to spoil everything for you guys. Um, but later in the movie, towards the climax, the, uh, the, the mechanic uh, hero guy, he does add some modifications to this car. And uh, it makes for a pretty memorable uh, car scene, I think. So I think that was a pretty cool aspect with this movie was seeing, you know, this addition to that car. But aside from that, from, from the front end being modified, the, the car looked pretty stock, although it had a pretty sweet uh, bright red uh, color to it. But I, I like that it had its had this, uh, you know, common, you know, this common look to it. Kind of like the, the, the Subaru and Baby Driver. It had that really common look to it. Um, but yeah, if, if you wanted to see like a car movie, I wouldn't call this a car movie, but I think the last 20 minutes is, is fairly satisfying if you're looking for, for something cool to see because there, it's, it's a lot of practical car stunts and, and there's a lot of clear shots of what's actually happening because, again, in Hollywood movies today, they do not film car scenes very clearly. The camera shakes uncontrollably. Uh, there's so many incredibly ridiculous uh, zooms with the camera where you can't even see what you're looking at. And they're just over-edited in Hollywood. But with this movie, I feel like they didn't do that. And that's why I appreciate the, the, the car scene in this movie. So if you have Netflix and you like to see car stuff, I would, I would recommend this movie. Because if you have Netflix, this movie's free and you're not going to lose by, by watching it. Um, that said, just remember, this is a, a poorly dubbed movie, <laughs> and there aren't any any cool characters in it. Uh, you're here really just, you know, to see the story. Uh, no one's really charismatic. Um, but yeah, you, you can see some, uh, some of these European cars put to use, especially the last 20 minutes of this movie. So I would, I would recommend this movie for, for, for car buffs, um, even though I don't really consider it a car movie. So have you guys seen this movie? What are your thoughts on Lost Bullet? And I forgot the name of this movie in French or whatever language it is. I'm saying whatever language it is because I didn't really look at it. Because usually I would do my research and go, hey, this is a French movie. I'm pretty sure it's a French movie, guys. 
I, I just don't want to say for sure because then I'll get some haters going, that's not a French movie. It's this kind of movie. All right, guys, post your thoughts. Thanks for watching.